without you by my side But then I spent so many nights thinking how to be wrong Now I get strong, now I learn how to get Well done, boys and girls. Thank you so much. Lots of work and energy put into this. All right, so you guys are going to boot, scoot, and boogie off to the side of the stage and get ready for your next number. They'll be right back out in just a second. And uh, thank you so much, you guys. Well, thank you. Appreciate it, Zach. 
Well, good morning. My name is Ryan Morrill, uh, part of our staff here, and we're so glad you have chosen to be here and with us this Sunday morning. Um, many of you are here probably for the first time. Some of you are here to see these children perform, which is wonderful. If you want to get more information here about Kensington, how to get connected here, what we're about, you can stop by um, our starting point area out in the lobby. People wearing orange shirts, and they will fill you in on everything you need to know. So we are in a journey here at Kensington uh, called the Everyone Campaign, and uh, it started about 14 months ago, and our lead pastor, Steve Andrews, is going to take a moment and just fill us in on how that is going. Watch this. So a little over a year ago, there were conversations popping up between me and a, just a lot of really good friends inside and outside Kensington. And the conversation was about how do we have a greater impact in the world? And so as we were talking about this, something really evolved that became what some of you know as Everyone, the Everyone Capital Campaign, a three-year campaign to give above and beyond your regular giving to make a movement grow where Jesus will be reaching the world. So thanks to your precious giving, we've already seen amazing things happening in the past year. Like in Traverse City, two great churches, Kensington and Bay Point, came together to collaborate and join together to be one church better together. And over the last year, we have had a chance to invest in tremendous renovations and upgrades. It's really exciting. I want to encourage all of you to take a vacation, go up there. Also the San Francisco area with Clint and Michael Dupin. I never dreamed that we'd be launching a church in San Francisco, but we have one of our greatest families and people are joining them. And then who would have ever guessed that we would be in the wildest part of planet Earth, the mountains of Afghanistan, a place where none of us will ever even be able to visit, but we're supporting a beautiful church planting movement that goes house to house and village to village under unimaginable danger. And then back home, we're impacting local schools through our Kids That Rock, our K-Rock Arts Program, involving hundreds of students, giving kids that are at schools that have no arts program a chance not only to learn the arts of all sorts, but to be touched by Jesus Christ and by our great leaders. We've also invested in the weekend experience at all eight of our Kensington campuses. Things like welcome signage in all of our lobbies, our brand new Kensington app where folks can connect online Thousands of people have downloaded and are using. It's changed the way we can sign up for groups and events. And then a roof for Orion. I mean, it's not too sexy, but there are some things that you just have to have. And wow, things are happening in Clinton Township. Site prep is well underway for our biggest project, a brand new building that will serve as a hub campus on the east side. It's gonna be a launch pad for campuses just like the ones that have sprung out of our hubs in Troy and Orion. And I'm really hoping you can make the official groundbreaking June 22nd. Everyone is invited. We're going to invade that property and dream dreams with God. I want to extend my deepest thanks to all of you who took part in this Everyone campaign. And yes, one year into it, I want to remind all of you to fulfill your pledge like I'm doing so we can complete this important work. It's been 27 years since God started a tiny movement called Kensington in a middle school auditorium. We didn't know if we'd last three months, and we certainly never imagined the impact that God would allow us to have all these years later in Michigan, Florida, Utah, California, New York, and around the world. Last week, I watched one of my favorite movies. It was the year before we started Kensington, Field of Dreams. And one line in that movie changed my life. Go the distance. Those words became a reality for me and for our team. All these years later, a lifetime of being surrounded by great people, not afraid to go the distance. People willing to sacrifice their comfort in order to be radically generous towards something much bigger and much more lasting. I'm humbled by you and grateful to you for listening and responding to God's call in your life. And in the process, bringing Jesus' message of forgiveness, hope, and love 
to everyone. Well, on behalf of Steve and uh, so many of us here that are on this journey, we just want to thank you for uh, being a part of this if you're in the journey. And uh, we look forward to uh, several years more of what this means. My family's in this, and there are times where it's, it's challenging to make that gift, but we're seeing the blessings of that, and God is providing so wonderfully in our own family as a result, and also just what he's doing here in this church. And so it's great to get that reminder. So, hey, who's ready for warmer weather right now, right? <laughs> There's a freeze warning tomorrow morning. It's May, right? But the sun will come out tomorrow. Wasn't Annie wonderful, by the way? Absolutely loved seeing that. My heart just melts every time I see it. I want to go watch the movie. The sun will come out tomorrow, and it will come out in June. We're excited about that. As we enter into summer, things begin to shift around this place as well. I work in our kids' department back there. And 200 services, 200-plus services a year, we require roughly around 50 volunteers every single service. There's about that many back there, even right now, who are caring for and leading our children. And during the summer, things change because many of them take vacations or just on a break for, for some of the weeks. And during that time, we still have to have a great and uh, quality children's program taking place. And this is where you get to come in. We have a program called Stand in the Gap. And we do this every year, but this year it's, we just feel like the need is even more. Um, and we need 200 people to, to join us in this journey. And today, as you came in the, the door, you got a card. And uh, this is our chance. We, we, we are unashamed to ask and even, in a way, plead for you to think about giving time this summer. One hour, maybe two hours or three hours, whatever weekend or, or, or service or time works for you. We would love to have you come back and be with us and, and work with our children, whether it's rocking a baby or hanging out with a three-year-old um, or playing games with our elementary children. You don't have to have a Bible degree. Uh, you don't have to have all the answers, just a, a, a heart that wants to serve and, and really a, a desire to have fun as well. And in doing this, you are providing such a, a great gift because we, we are so proud of what we get to do back there. We get to share truth, the truth of Jesus with kids every single weekend. But we also know that while we get to do that, parents get to sit in this auditorium him um, without any distractions, and they get to receive that truth as well, and then take it back into their homes and have that impact their home. And so you can join on this journey with us. You can put your name on this card, fill out just some of the lines that are there with your email and contact info, mark a month maybe that works best for you. We will be in contact with you this week. We'll send you the forms and everything so that you can get involved with us this summer and make an impact. So please, please do this. Who would be willing? Just let me ask this question. Who would raise their hand right now and say, I'm willing to do this? Just a few hands. Thank you so much. I see those hands. We need many more. We have about 40 right now. Our goal is 200. So we got a ways to go. So please join us in this. Um, all right. So what's going to take place now as the children are about to come back out? You're going to hear the story um, of the Good Samaritan told in a way, uh, an incredibly creative way that you probably haven't seen or thought of before, which is wonderful. And following that, Steve Andrews, who, we, who you just saw, will be giving the message um, on video. Before we do that, though, it's getting crowded in here. We have lots of people here today for our, what is our, usually our most crowded service. So what we want you to do is stand up, greet a few people. If there's uh, seats in the middle of your rows, please move towards the middle so they can make room on the ends. Thanks so much. And drama troupe having come dropped in the middle of an audition spot for a gig and Baba Vadince. Does this make sense? Are you fallen? Wedding season has every artist a calling. Let's get started. We need to book this thing, all right? Who can rock harder or be a top charter? Dash a little showstopper. Got to take a bit farther. At this point, a duel is bound to be started. That brings us to today, and nothing much has changed. Our story greets the people who don't agree on the refrain. The rock and rolls begin to rumble, riffing solos no restraint. And the reverb, it was strange when it got to Broadway Bay. Well, the chorus 
when they heard they said this melody seemed strange Man threw off every death and screwed up every stage Stratocaster sounded and the ballads they seemed strange And the score would never be the same Something strange, man A brand new part she needs one bad A little she has never had And all the Lion Kings have been bizarre She'll travel far, she'll travel far When she was ready, that was it Clock goes tick, no more sitting sheet music marked With her 16 bars, it was locked Dang character shoes were packed Her leotard was fitted But she would never know the way the blood had thickened Started on the road, it was so far, there seemed no end in sight Left her with nothing but ruin, pride, the lead role inside a voice Saying, come on, keep your eyes to the sky Bandits hiding lines, secrets plotting danger on her guy There would have been nothing left to do for someone less astute She couldn't sasha to the right, hardly hit her one and two Started twirling, falling, odds were stacked against her badly This audition was out of sight, all bruised up, she could barely breathe the bandit's head Taking everything they get their hands on Left without a future, only broken legs to stand on The scene, it seemed grim, she was left without an end In need of a good brother or friend 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 Everyone's just coming towards her now See Spot him a perfect rescue. Oh, thank God he's not forgotten. His enemies destroyed him. Such a plan to surely spot her. Will someone be me? I have to live. Me, I stepped over her. The priest, he circled her. And me? I don't wear glitter, but I got her. This rock and roller didn't need to help, but just you wait. Are you okay, man? In need of a friend. Hamilton and Burr, Coca-Cola and Pepsi, Batman and Joker, rock and roll and show tunes. There are things in this world that are just never going to get along. Opposites, rivals, enemies. Or are they? Here we have the rock and rollers from Cliff Riffs overlooking the showstoppers from Broadway Bay. Anytime one group met another, things would escalate quickly. The jazz hands and hair bands would fly. At times, these duos could get, well, explosive. Auditions will be starting in 10 minutes. Have your headshots and resumes ready. <laughs> Fellas, do you see what I see? Well, if it isn't some of those Broadway bozos. <laughs> Check it, gang. And Ready, five, five, six, seven, seven eight. eight. I must be mistaken, but it seems as though you're waiting here, too. Audition? Yeah, so what if we are? We're as good as band as any. Right, guys? Yeah. Oh, please, you can't even step, touch, and sink. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't see a chance. <sighs> Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Buddy, oh boy, make a big noise. Laying in the street's gonna be a big man someday. You got mud on your face, you big disgrace. Kicking your can all over the place. We
Sadly, this was an all-too-common occurrence. It seemed the two of us found more and more to fight over, and any similarities they might have shared were lost between the pyrotechnics and the seamless choreographies of their duels. It might have stayed that way forever, if not if fate stepped in to lend a hand. One day, a showstopper was crossing town to the audition of a lifetime the leader in The Lion King. No, not the one you all know. Rather of a story of how Lion escapes the zoo and has accidentally become the King of England. Oh, it's just marvelous. You should see the costumes. Um. <clears throat> Anyways, she was crossing town when out of nowhere, disaster struck. <laughs> She laid there, helpless, hoping someone would come along. In her delirium, she heard the sound of footsteps. <gasps> That's Alan Tree Lloyd Webber! Mr. Webber, Mr. Webber! Help me make the music of the... Nuts! <laughs> Time passed and no one came. She began to wonder if anyone would come down the street. <sighs> but the priest was no help. Finally, after hours of waiting on the side of the road, she began to hear voices in the distance. Please, help! I need help! But as they drew closer, she heard them more clearly. The sound of squeaking leather jackets was unmistakable. Oh, great. Well, might as well get comfortable. So, I was like, I don't know, man. Can you favorite with the... Whoa, whoa, whoa! Ha! Looks like this showstopper lost her sparkles. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're very funny. You should take it on the road. Hey, guys. I think this dude is hurt. And what was your first clue? What you say? Oh, nothing at all. Listen, buddy, if you think... It's okay, Axel. I'll take care of this. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. It's just one scrawny showstopper. You guys go on ahead. I'll catch up. All right, if you're sure. You'll meet us up. We're hearsing my mom's basement today. I'll be there. All right, but don't be late. My mom's making smoothies. <laughs> <laughs> smoothies! Ah! What? Mine! Um, what? I'm calling for my line. Line! Look here, uh, friend. I haven't had the slightest notion what you think you're doing, so that means I don't know what to do, and I need my line. 
well, these papers seem important, so I thought I'd pick them up for you. What I'm trying to say is, we are enemies. Why are you helping me? <sighs> you see, I never really understood all that, you know? Your group, my group. I mean, I know show tunes and rock and roll are a little a different. A little? Okay, a lot. But they're both music. I've literally never thought of that before. Yeah, they're both music. And they're both kind of big, flashy, almost exaggerated shows. I mean, have you ever seen a Queen concert? A Who concert? No, not the Who, Queen. <laughs> Queen Who? A group, Queen, and the Who are... The Who are Who, and what is a group, Queen? We're getting off topic. What I'm trying to say is, we have a lot more in common than you think. All right, let's get you to the hospital. Wait, you're going to help me? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not a big deal or anything. That, my friend, is where you're very wrong. It is a big deal, at least to me. If I hurry, I can still make my audition. Um, I thought you were hurt. Oh no, just dramatic emphasis. There, hand me my blood and give me your shoulder to lean on. That just satisfy the muse. Your blood, huh? One must be prepared for all eventualities, even bandits. Hmm, this is kind of nice. Okay. Okay, 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 let's get a rockin' and rollin' here. Um, what are you doing? You know, eyes, acting. Right. Ooh, maybe I should chat. Head painting. Too far, bud. Too far. Fine. Wow. What a fun way to tell one of Jesus' best stories. When I watch these K-Rock kids year after year, season after season, it is incredible, isn't it? To see what they can do, to see their confidence and the message that they deliver. In fact, in all my life, I have certainly never seen the story that Jesus tells of the Good Samaritan delivered better than these kids have delivered it here. And they're doing it all over the city of Detroit today and this past week. Underneath this story is a dream that this is actually a new way that we could live. This way of compassion, of crossing barriers, of breaking uh, century old hatreds that keep people apart. In fact, I was thinking about this this week. I remember getting beaten and bloodied by a bully in fifth grade, and he was in sixth grade. And what made it worse is as he was pummeling me in the face, he had six of his buddies in a circle around me so that I knew that even if I won, which I didn't because I, I was a wimp, there was no escape. I was longing for someone to reach out to me when I was alone and afraid. And on that, on that day, there was no one to help. I think everyone knows at some point what that feels like. You see, what you just witnessed is Jesus inviting us to do what seems to be an impossible task, to love those who despise us, to care even for those who have mistreated us. And often this begins by showing kindness to someone we perceive to be different from ourselves. A lot of you don't know this because we live in an era where we try to teach people to love everybody and to be kind, but you've got to understand that when Jesus was teaching this, this idea of loving your enemy was so revolutionary for the time he was teaching, and what's true is it still is. When you see people forgiving their enemies, where does that come from? It really requires a supernatural strength. Our K-Rock kids are leaders who are starting to do this. They're starting to be changed by Jesus, starting to be messengers of Jesus, starting to, to see like Jesus sees. And the leaders of our K-Rock movement are remarkable visionaries. They are connecting our kids and Kensington with school partners and we're seeing beautiful things happen, things that we actually wondered if they ever would happen. I'm gonna tell you about one of them at the end of this message. They've connected with 
these school partners, and school partners are a way that Kensington reaches local communities and needs through the school, building relationships, bringing resources, and modeling the kingdom of God. And so, as we actually are gonna be taking this offering at many of our campuses right now together, because you're seeing me on this, on this screen, I just wanna tell you, as you take this moment to consider your partnership with us, this offering includes our engagement in local schools. It includes this amazing program. The kids get the chance to sing and act and pray and build amazing Jesus-centered friendships. So as we, as we get ready to take this offering, let me just open with prayer. Father, thank you. Thank you that in this story and in the, the teaching of our students, we see that there is a new way to live, a new way begun from the heart of the Father revealed through you, his Son. And so, Lord, work in us. Show us what this could mean for us personally today and what it could mean for our church and for our community and for our world. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the great side benefits of traveling the world is seeing that no matter where I go, no matter how different people's life experiences, I'm always amazed at how much the same we are. I just came back from Egypt and Kenya, my latest uh, excursion into the world, and you would think people in Egypt are so different from us, and you'd be so wrong. Because at the core, we all have the same hopes and dreams. We're searching for the same things. And so instead of focusing on how big the world and how complicated it is and how small we might be, I love what Chris Arbaugh said to see, no, the world is so small and God is so big. In fact, since we started Kensington many years ago, we've seen a remarkable change in the whole Detroit region. In these years that we've existed as a church, we've seen the whole world move to Detroit. It's incredible. It's hard to believe how rapidly this has happened. And all of a sudden, we live in a region that is so rich in culture. Within three miles of where any of you that are listening to this voice and this message, there are hundreds of ethnic restaurants there are so many people to connect with in the world and so much possibility. And I think Jesus is saying, if we could move out of our fear and hesitation, there is a world of wonder waiting for us. And so much of this opportunity reflects the beauty and creativity of God. Isn't that amazing? The result of this great story that Jesus told is to tell us how to live our story and how to live it with the heart of Jesus Christ. In fact, let's read the story together. You can follow with me this story of the Good Samaritan that Jesus tells. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, what's written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, well, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You've answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. This religious guy that was asking Jesus. So he said, who's my neighbor? And in reply, Jesus said, this story. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. It's just a, it's an, it's a journey of 18 miles, but it's in rough mountainous country. And it says, in, on this journey, he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes. They beat him. They went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. Remember, the pastor was no help. So too, a Levite, verse 32, when he came to the place and saw him pass by on the other side. Both priests and Levites in Jewish culture existed 
to lead people to worship God, to know, to know God. They were the people you would have picked to help this beaten man. But instead, a Samaritan comes. What's a Samaritan? The Sar Samaritans were a racially mixed group of people that had both Jewish and non-Jewish ancestry. And so to Jews, they were half-breeds. And although they worshiped the same God of the Jews, Yahweh, their religion was not mainstream and they were not welcome. They were despised. So this despised Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him and he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And then he put the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn and took care of him. By the way, just a side note. I was in Mexico when a woman gave birth in a village where I was. She walked in leading a man on a donkey, even though she was nine months pregnant in labor. Later, we asked the man, why didn't you let your wife ride the donkey? And his, his reply, well, it's my donkey. This is the way we think about our lives. We think that our stuff is ours, that our world centers around us. But this Samaritan is gonna teach us a new way. He gives up his ride. It says the next day in verse 35, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. And then Jesus asked this most amazing question. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? And the expert, this religious expert in the law replies, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus said, go and do likewise. You know what's interesting about this story is that this guy can't even say the word Samaritan. He just says the one who showed mercy because he despised the fact that this man is the unlikely hero of this story. You see, Jesus is driving us somewhere and it's to see this, that love is not affinity. Love is not likeness. Love is action. And if we say we care, and we don't do anything, it's not true, it's not real. In fact, in 1 John, another part of the Bible, this truth is nailed where the writer, John's, John, who was one of Jesus' disciples, says this, if anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. Jesus sees this Samaritan man as this picture of action. It says he had pity on someone whom he knew despised him. You see, the beaten man would have looked down. He would have not gone out of his way. In fact, the Jews would sometimes walk 12 miles out of their way to avoid the Samaritan community. That's how much they despised being around these people. And so this despised man, who's considered less than human, stops and endangers his own life to help someone who hated him. I don't think I would do that, do you? For years I've lived across the street from Oakland University. I've watched it grow in the last 25 years into a, a broadening complex where tens of thousands of students come to be educated. And over those years I've watched more and more international students from all over the world come to attend. And I felt a burden for them for these strangers to America. But you know what I did? I did nothing. I did nothing about the burden. I knew many of them would never be invited into an American home. They'd come to school here for a number of years. They'd go back to their countries, never being invited into the home of someone local. You see, I had the emotion, but not the action. It's, 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 it's hitting like on a media post, but not having any change in your behavior to go with the like. If it doesn't lead to action, it's nothing. All those international students never benefited once from my thoughts and what they needed was someone to do something. And so this is the truth for today. Here's the truth. Crossing the road, like the Samaritan does, is gonna cost you something every time. This road was difficult 
and dangerous. In fact, I can show you, uh, just take a look at this modern image of hikers on the road to Jericho. This was a, a day, you could just see where uh, this 18 mile journey along the mountainside and down through valleys and rocks and places to hide. This was actually called by some local people the bloody pass because you took your own life into your hands when you traveled this road. I'm sure the priest and the Levite had legitimate reasons to be concerned. Was this guy faking? Was he acting like he'd been robbed and hurt only in order to lure them in to endanger their lives? I believe the question they were asking was this. If I stop to help this man, what will happen to me? But then the Samaritan comes. He asks a totally different question. His question is this. If I don't stop to help this man, what will happen to him? You see, there's this other centeredness about love that Jesus is inviting us to live. What will happen if I don't care for others around me who are lonely or strangers or confused? You see, the more we step into people's lives, the more the world changes. The more walls of hatred start to fall, but you have to get close. When I met Cam Underdown, I never imagined this squirrely college kid would become my son-in-law. He was a college kid who met Jesus through our college ministry. He was quirky and different, and if you know him, you know that I'm not exaggerating. But what was especially different about him was this well of compassion and love that flowed from him for people. And it was during those years that college students from Oakland started hanging out at our house because we were strategically located right across the street. International students that I had thought about but done nothing to care for started to come to our house for meals and games and even to stay with us all because of Cam, all because of Jesus' love flowing through one person. Today, Cam is still loving and serving Oakland University international students. What I felt, he turned into action. And it's cost something, because crossing the road will always cost you something. When you cross that road, it's gonna mean your time. It's gonna mean money. It's gonna mean inconvenience. It's gonna mean sacrifice, to give your life away. And it's especially difficult to extend yourself to those who you're suspicious of. Different culture, background, ideology. It isn't natural for any of us to do this, but it's life-changing and earth-shattering when we do it. Jesus said in another section of the Gospels where another part of Jesus' teaching, he says, if you love those who love you, what credit is it to you? Even sinners love those who love them. Sinners are people that had wandered away from God. And he says, if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners, expecting to be repaid in full. And then Jesus changes the world. He says, but love your enemies. Do good to them. Lend to them without expecting to get anything back. And if you do this, your reward will be great. You'll be children of the Most High because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. That's our God. Our God cares even for those who have rejected him and rejected goodness. To those that are ungrateful, our God is merciful. And so Jesus says to us, be merciful just as your heavenly Father is merciful. How is this even possible? How can we love like this? For me, there's only one way that I know of personally. It's only when I realize how much Jesus has loved me, how much he's loved us all. Genuine love is directed to more than just those who make us feel good or look like us or talk like us or think like us. Love is way more than tolerance. It's sacrificial, it's other-centered, it's going out of our way. It's a choice to shatter the comfort zone you and I find ourselves in. One more verse. 
Jesus said to his disciples, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. You see, the love flows out of his love for us. And he says, and by this, all will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. And so the question today really for us is, what action out of your life and mine could be a reflection of God's unconditional love for people? What behaviors are you demonstrating or could I demonstrate that would give someone a genuine opportunity to experience how God really feels about them? Imagine what it would look like if we considered our enemies as those who could receive our love by what we do. And what if we rejected passivity, not just individually? What if we did that as a church? What if we did that in our campus and our church plants and our connections to open our lives up to people that are different from us? How could this be? This is how. Because Jesus willingly chose to give up everything, to lose everything. It's amazing. So when he's telling this story, he's not just telling a cute story, it's a description of what he is going to do for all of us. He's our king. And when we believe in Jesus, his life begins to work in us. He can change our marriages, change our families, our workplaces, our neighborhoods, our church, our community, and our world. I can't think of any better illustration this week than our own K-Rock team. Our K-Rock teams at all six locations are seeing God's power at work. Not just within our campuses, but with our school partners. This past Monday night, I was at the newly renovated Strand Theater in Pontiac, Michigan. Renovated by a Kensington family with a vision for Pontiac. It was so beautiful to watch our K-Rock team from Birmingham perform in partnership with the students of Studiax, Pontiac students of ITA that are one of our school partners. They put on this show, the show that you've just watched, and it was an amazing technicolor night of people from many ethnicities, from different languages, different backgrounds, and they were nothing short of amazing. This night, this past Monday night, was a living image of what Jesus wants to do and what he can do. I'm so proud of our K-Rock leaders and team because they don't believe in geographical or ethnic or economic barriers to people experiencing the love of Jesus. Those kids Monday night have differences that make them seem worlds apart. Birmingham, Pontiac. But this winter and spring, they worked hard. And they pulled off something that was not only multi-ethnic, but multi-talented and multi-joyful. Julie Borkin, who's our school partners director, she actually grabbed me afterwards and said, it felt like heaven dropped right down into the Strand Theater tonight. I thought, it's exactly how I felt. Those students from Pontiac and Birmingham maybe having an experience that was gonna change the trajectory of their lives, the way they see people, the way they show love, the way they tear down walls. Our kids are seeing Jesus working in them and walls of separation can start to come down when we realize that Jesus can do anything. And I love it that K-Rock is one of the best parts of Kensington leading this charge. So I thought for us today, if we're gonna break down walls of difference here, where do we begin? Everyone in the sound of my voice is surrounded by diversity, different language, different educational experience, different shades of skin and texture of hair or no hair, different beliefs about God. And I thought, this is what we can do. Number one, every one of us can decide to step across the barrier of discomfort, to go to go to people in your neighborhood, to go to people, where, to meet people where your kid's school at, or to go and to cross the barrier of culture and language, and most of all, the barrier of fear. And you know how you do it? You go as a learner. You say, I don't understand your culture, and I know I'm gonna make mistakes, but would you teach me something about 
where you're from and what your life is like, I have found that everyone that I ask of this wants to be engaged. They want to be known. We have so much to learn and so much richness to mine from other people. In fact, this is what missionaries finally learned around the world, that when they went to a new culture, they would say, I'm a learner. I come as a child. Will you teach me? What if every person at Kensington began to do that with the people in their lives? Number two, if you're a committed part of Kensington, you know that we see people at every campus and every service who are different than us. All of us are experiencing this. To make Jesus beautiful at Kensington, what if every one of us committed to go out of our way every time you're here to speak to someone, to step into an intentional conversation with someone that you don't know and are even nervous to meet? Especially if you think, I probably have nothing in common with them because if you talk to them, you will find maybe your best friend is waiting. It's funny, my dad was a very successful doctor in Memphis and he would go and fish in Tunica, Mississippi and there was a, a man, P.W. Alderson, who I don't think he had a teeth since he was 30 and, and I, I knew him as a boy when he was in his 70s. He lived in a tin shack house with his wife, Tavy Alderson. You know what my dad said? He said that tin shack home in Tunica, Mississippi was the place where he felt most at home in the world. People you would have never thought he had anything in common with. That's what's waiting for us. And then for Kensington as a movement, our team, our leadership team right now, we're spending great amounts of time strategizing not only in how we take Jesus to the world, but how can we bring Jesus to the world that has come right here to Metro Detroit? Right here around all of our campuses, all of these amazing, beautiful people waiting for a friendship, waiting to know what people who love Jesus are like. It's such an exciting time to be alive, isn't it? So, if Jesus is alive from the grave, and if he lives in people by his spirit, then we have his power to be like the Good Samaritan, to be set free from a life of self-protection, to extend ourselves sacrificially to others, no matter how deeply we might disagree. I really believe that Jesus is calling us to enjoy and celebrate every shade of skin, the distinctive look of every face, to show kindness regardless of politics or geography or religion or background, whether friend or enemy. And it's so cool that our K-Rock students are taking us there. And as we finish today, they're gonna to take us right into this vision because they're learning to see Jesus and they're teaching us to do the same. Imagine a world where people start to see in a new and transforming way. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for not leaving us alone in our brokenness and our separation from you. Thank you for sending Jesus and thank you, Jesus, for, for revealing God's heart for all people. And Jesus, as we see you, as we look to you, would you give us your eyes to see those around us? Would you make us as a community the most radical, risk-taking group of lovers the world has ever seen? In Jesus' name, amen. Stand face to face
Let's give it up for these guys. Well done, boys and girls. have done such an incredible job of illustrating this story about one, helping people, but even more the willingness and desire to leave your comfort zone and go into the unknown and take a risk. And God is calling all of us to do that. And it's so neat to see that illustrated and again, um, performed by you guys. Now we've got a couple young people here who um, have been thinking about this and seeing God at work in their own lives. And so, Zach, first of all, tell us how old you are. Seven. Seven years old. And, Zach, how has God been speaking to you through the story of the Good Samaritan? If somebody's not your friend, you should still help them. Like, if somebody is your friend, you should help them. And how did that get lived out in your life? I went to my grandma's church, and people that didn't have homes, they went there, and I helped serve to out food to them, and I played games with them. They had fun, and I had fun. That's great. Glad you guys had fun. It's wonderful. All right, Miss Katriana, how are you? Good. Good. Tell us how old you are. I'm 11. I'm Ele in fifth grade. You're in fifth grade. All right, and how has God been speaking to you through this experience? Um, I learned that you should always help people, even when they're different. And how did you get to go and see that in action? Um, there's a janitor at my school who only speaks Spanish, so we couldn't communicate to him. So I wrote him a note in Spanish with help from my Spanish teacher, and I made him a basket full of goodies and treats and let him know that our whole school really appreciated him. Muy bueno. Yes. Excellent, Katriana. All right, and Ana, how has God been talking to you through this? Um, even if someone's not your friend or you don't know them, then you can still go and help them if they need it. And how did you experience that firsthand? Um, I did a serial drive for the Haven Homeless Shelter. The Haven Homeless Shelter is where, where uh, people go when they've been abused in a relationship. Excellent. Let's give it up for these three brave, brave children. I'll drop that back from you. I hope you're inspired as they're living it out and they're taking these bold risks as, you know, 7, 11. Anna, how old are you? Eight years old. 7, 11, and 8 years old, and they're taking these risks, which for them, I'm sure, is a huge step. But yet for us, um, who are older than that, it can be so difficult and challenging at times. So God is moving each of us and challenging us into the unknown, but he does great things through us when we do that for his kingdom. We are going to close here um, first with a prayer from many different children from all across Kensington, all of our K-Rock campuses, and then the children are going to lead us in one final song of worship together. Dear Lord, please help us to see that we can be that we can be good Samaritans and we can help other people the way that Jesus helped 
all of us by taking away our sins and help us to not be afraid to do whatever we need to do today and give someone a compliment or that give someone some encouragement and just please help us to not be afraid and to know that you are the light of our lives. Dear God, please help us love others the way that we love you, God, and the way that, we, the, the way that you love us. I hope that everybody that we don't really know or like will become better friends with us and we can all get along someday. Dear Lord, I hope that the Good Samaritans show love and when they're getting rough, that we help them. I pray that um, everybody would learn about Jesus and we would help our enemies instead of hating our enemies and loving other people and learning about Jesus' story. Amen. Let us help others when we don't usually help and be kind to everybody and love others. Amen. Jesus, you are a good Samaritan. You did all you could for us. Even when people were your enemies, you still said forgive them no matter what. Let us be a good Samaritans and um, let us help others. Like if somebody's being bullied, you could like work it out and um, and that's the homeless people that don't have homes. Let them feel happy and um, and hope they're doing well. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. that they can be part of this incredible experience. Uh, we have a camp coming actually this summer, end of July. We would love for them to be a part of that. Next weekend, we hope you come back for uh, our Mother's Day weekend message. And as you can see up here, it is called Wonder Women. Yes, they are all Wonder Women moms, so bring them back. And uh, finally, if you have these cards, I don't think I said this, if you didn't put it in the offering, drop it to an usher on the way out the door. We'd love to have you serving kids this summer. Thank you so much, everybody. And we'll see you back next weekend. Thank you, children. Excellent job.